everyone welcome to kemi friends today we are going to hey you forgot again introduce yourself hello everyone i am akshay and welcome to kemi friends today we will be discussing about how to mathematically model and simulate reactors on matlab so this is a two part video so the first uh, video will have an easy question and the second will be not so easy question so brace for it yeah so let's jog through our memory on how to derive the design equations and then begin our question so let's begin so let's begin with the first equation which is the most paramount equation when it comes to a reaction system so for a component a present in the reactor we have uh, the mass that enters the reaction system minus mass of that exit the reactor system plus uh, the amount of air generated within the reactor system is equal to the total accumulation of uh, component a so let's uh, begin with the, the derivation of uh, three types of uh, reactors so let's begin with the batch reactor so using the same equation which is the component balance we have in minus out plus generation equals accumulation and uh, in a batch reactor we don't have any flow in or out due to which uh, these two components become zero and hence the rate of generation will be equal to the rate of accumulation but since a is a reactant a will get consumed and hence the negative sign and so finally we get this equation where uh, the rate of change in concentration of a with respect to time is equal to the rate of consumption of it moving on to chtr we have uh, f a not which is the initial flow rate of a and uh, f a which is the final flow rate of a exiting the chtr and at steady state we have in minus out plus generation equals accumulation you can notice that all these this particular equation is common in all or any particular reactor system so we have in minus out plus generation equals accumulation and at steady state in a chtr uh, so when t tends to infinity the flow rate will be same so at steady state f a not will be constant and f a will be constant so we'll have no no accumulation as such within the reactor and the level will be level of the chtr will be constant due to which uh, we have uh, the next equation we have f a not minus f a plus rate at which a gets consumed is equal to zero because the accumulation term is zero and finally we have uh, the design equation for a chtr now moving on to pfr we have a similar condition as in chtr f a not and f a where f a not is the flow rate of uh, a entering the system and f a is the flow rate of a exiting the system and again we have the component balance and the accumulation term is zero now within the pfr let's consider a small value vol, uh, volume delta v and uh, delta v tends to zero okay so at volume v equals v say this this is equal to v all right and this is this will be equal to v plus delta v right so we'll have f a at uh, v minus f a at v plus delta v plus generation will be equal to accumulation so there is no accumulation again because uh, at t tends to infinity uh, there won't be any accumulation and uh, we take the rate common and uh, put delta v in the denominator which is uh, present in the previous equation and uh, apply limits that uh, v tends to delta v tends to zero we obtain the final uh, design equation of uh, the pfr so we will be using these equations uh, in our future exercises so make sure you know them and uh, i think uh, it's pre pretty easy how it's done so whatever questions we do in future regarding mathematical modeling and simulation we will be following one particular methodology so let me explain what it is about so henceforth while approaching any problem we'll follow this methodology 
So first one will be reading the question, then uh, obtaining the initial values of the problem and we will require this to solve and integrate our differential equation numerically. So we will get this from the question and uh, next we will uh, derive the mathematical model and uh, identify the parameters which change with respect to the differential equation. We will get into this uh, in further detail later on and uh, next we will use this equation from the above steps and uh, plug it into MATLAB and uh, finally obtain and interpret the results and make sense out of what we have got. So as we have already discussed our methodology, the first step will be to read the question. And uh, we have an elementary liquid phase series reaction where A becomes B which turns into C and we have been given the rate constants. And uh, A is a decomposition reaction where uh, B is the desired product and uh, the flow rate of the feed A is 50 liter per minute and uh, the initial concentrations are given and also the question asks us to assume isothermal conditions. So this means that the rate constants K1 and uh, K2 are constant. So there are no parameters which change with respect to temperature. So we have been given two questions which is to determine the maximum concentration of B and the time when the concentration of B reaches the maximum value and uh, we have been given the rate constants as you can see they are not a function of temperature since it's an isothermal condition well they are uh, functions of temperature but since it's isothermal conditions they are constant and uh, finally in the second uh, part we have been asked to find the volume when uh, CB is maxi at maximum concentration so looks like a pretty simple uh, question uh, there is a representation of this question uh, right here where C A naught, C B naught and C C naught are given. So we have been given the initial conditions are 5, 0 and 0 uh, concentrations. So finally we have been given T is constant and uh, let's take a look at the next step. So moving on to part 2 we obtain the initial values for the problem which is already clearly stated in the question and we have discussed it pre in the previous part. So we have initial values of concentrations of CA, CB and uh, CC and uh, it is equal to 5, 0 and 0. Moving on to part 3, we will develop the mathematical model and uh, obtain the ordinary differential equations that define the system. So we only require to do material balance since it's an isothermal system and uh, we already know that A gives B gives C and it's been already stated in the question that it's an elementary reaction. So the order of the reaction will have the same uh, order as the stoichiometric coefficient of the reactant. So since the stoichiometric coefficient of uh, A and B is 1, so the order of all the reactions will be equal to 1. So the first equation where uh, we obtain uh, the rate of uh, change in concentration of A is given by the rate of disappearance of A. So this term as we already know gives the rate of disappearance of A and as we have already derived uh, previously on how the batch reactor uh, design system works uh, we obtain the equation 1 and similarly for uh, the rate of change in uh, concentration of uh, B with respect to time we have two terms here where uh, the first term is equal to the rate of disappearance of A due to which B is formed. So this contributes in formation of B whereas the second term co contributes in disappearance of B. So this, this factor takes into account the rate of reaction at which uh, B becomes C. So this is what happens and uh, this this is equation 2 and uh, finally we have uh, the rate of change in concentration of c with respect to b uh, sorry with respect to time and uh, this is given by the product of k2 into cb and as we already discussed in equation 2 that uh, this particular uh, part of the equation contributes in formation of c so we have three equations here so we have three ODEs and uh, we have uh, three 
initial value so we can move on to the next section so in part 5 we will be uh, using the equations derived from the previous section and uh, model it on matlab so i am here in the matlab environment where uh, i have already made the code for you guys so if you want the code you can email to us at chemifriends@gmail.com and we'll send you this code for free and uh, yeah so we begin with uh, defining the parameters already given in the questions so we have v which is a volumetric flow rate the initial value c a not c b not and c c not and uh, we have k1 and k2 which are the rate constants next we create an anonymous function so since this uh, this question is uh, relatively easy and has only three differential equations so i have created a small anonymous function through which we get a column matrix okay you can see it separated by a semicolon so we have a column matrix and we have to give the right hand side of equation 1 2 and 3 which we saw in the derivation of the mathematical model of uh, this batch reactor system so if you remember the rate of change in uh, concentration of uh, a with respect to time is given by k1 into concentration of a and uh, matlab ex accepts only uh, this type of equation where uh, c1 is given by ca c2 is given by cb and uh, c3 is given by uh, cc all right so we have dca by dt is equal to k1 into ca so c1 is equal to ca and uh, the right hand side of the second equation is equal to k1 into ca minus k2 into cb and uh, the right hand side of the third equation if i have written it down is equal to k2 into cb so we have a set of differential equation in a, in the form of a column matrix and we will be calling this anonymous function later on okay so the other parameters of integration are these two where uh, we have uh, the initial condition which will be in the form of a row matrix all right so this will be the initial condition and it will be in the form of row matrix and we are in entering the initial condition which is 500 so i could have just entered 500 directly in the script here but uh, i think it would be easier to understand if i define it in, in the form of ca not but you can just directly write 500 all right and uh, we have t span between 0 and 15 minutes so what our ODE solver will do is that it will integrate between time t equals 0 and uh, t equals 15 minutes and we will get our answer. So we will use uh, t comma c equals uh, ODE 15s which is whatever method that I have selected. We will be looking into what methods are available in MATLAB and uh, we'll be calling the function dy dx which is the anonymous function used to obtain the differential equation so this particular variable calls uh, the differential equations and we have t span where uh, we have to between the time where we want to integrate between so we have we want to integrate between 0 and 15 and i have said that there must be thousand uh, spaces between 0 and 15 and uh, we give it the initial condition and give it the ODE and run the code. So we will look at what kind of output this uh, particular uh, line gives us. As we just saw in the line 16 of our MATLAB code, we want the outputs for T matrix and C matrix. So I just want you guys to get an idea of uh, what the output would look like. So t will be a column vector between uh, 0 and 15 as we have specified in t span and the number of rows will be 1000 as we have uh, defined t span as being so. Whereas the matrix C will have the values of C A ranging from t equals uh, 0 to t equals 15 and similarly C, uh, C2 will give uh, C B and uh, the third column will give the values of C C. Uh, ranging from 0 to 15. So next we will be plotting between uh, the times and uh, the concentrations and let's get back to the MATLAB uh, workspace.
So now we are back in the MATLAB environment and uh, since we already have an idea about what our uh, output should look like from this OD solver, uh, it's pretty straightforward from now on. So we have these four uh, lines of code. The first one will uh, plot uh, between T, C, A, C, C, time and uh, C, B and time and C, C. So since uh, concentration of uh, all three species is a function of time, we will see how the time, how the concentration of each species will change with respect to time in the batch reactor. And uh, these two are just for the aesthetics. So we'll have legend as well as uh, X label and Y label. And uh, in one of the parts of the questions, we need to find out at what point uh, the concentration of B is at its maximum. So this line is used to find out uh, at what time uh, the concentration of uh, CB will be at its maximum and uh, finally we'll, finally we'll uh, display the output of uh, the code. Okay, now we are ready to run the code. So we will go and run this code. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we have a time at which CB is maximum is at uh, 3.4685 minutes and uh, we have volume at which uh, CB is at its maximum is uh, 173 liters. And now let's look at the plot. So in the plot, we can see a typical series reaction uh, curve. So we have CA, which uh, is at its maximum when it's being entered in the batch reactor and uh, gradually it decreases to zero. And uh, we have B, which increases and uh, obtains its maxima at uh, 3.4. And, and finally reduces and uh, last but not the least we have CC which uh, gradually increases and uh, it will continue to increase uh, until we supply uh, CA. So we'll now click on the help button. Okay so the help box has opened and uh, we will uh, take a look at what solvers are inbuilt in uh, MATLAB. So we will uh, type ODE solver and uh, we can see choose an ODE solver and uh, this is a very help uh, this is very helpful in understanding what kind of uh, solvers we require. So for example ODE 45 is uh, for uh, non-stiff problems and uh, I think it uses uh, Runge Kutta fourth order if I'm not wrong we need to take a look at it and uh, there are many different uh, solvers. In this equation, we have used OD15S. I think, uh, oh, it's, accuracy is pretty low. So for the medium accuracy, I think OD45 is the best. Okay, so I hope you understood the first question and uh, stay tuned for the second part where we'll be, we will be solving the second question. And uh, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Take care. Bye.